fails, your goodness fails me never. Good shepherd, may I sing your praise within your house forever. May God be with you. And also with you. It is so good to hear these little sounds of babies um, among us and to Claire's family and to Benjamin's family. Welcome to all of us who are here. Welcome to everybody online. Welcome. Um, Mount Olivet Lutheran Church, we're here for worship and it's a super cool day. We have baptisms and we are also celebrating our third graders who get their Bibles today. So third graders and their families will have a special blessing as well. And um, that just makes us realize these baptismal promises. It's church and community together. And so you will make a promise on behalf of Benjamin and Claire today. And you have made a promise to those third graders to know and celebrate their call in the world. And we're changed when we realize that God is on the move and little ones and big ones as well. Um, parents of little ones, I, I'm gonna move over here. I brought one of these. We have these busy bags. Um, they're right out there on a little rack or an adult. If you want a busy bag, you're welcome to have one too. Everything you might need. If the sermon gets a little long for you, um, it's good. But we're glad to have those back um, for kids today. Uh, we are dwelling in stories. The theme this fall is the story unfolds. And so we are jumping around. We'll be in the Old Testament today. Old Testament, New Testament, dwelling in these stories where it's kind of in the meantime, where things aren't figured out on what comes next. And um, it's really enlightening to think that that is our story of this life. So as we find ourselves emerging from a pandemic, asking questions about what God is up to now. Um, today, a story about Moses and his father-in-law. Um, very fascinating, and so um, we will dwell there today. So, so glad you are here. Everything that you need is in your bulletin or on screen. Um, everybody online, what you need is already in your home in a community that comes and joins you there as well. So I invite you, as you are able, to stand as we sing together. bro
We gather in the name of the creator, redeemer, and author of life. In this time of uncertainty, we confess our sins. We'll take a moment now in silence for our own confession. God of grace, we come to you speaking for ourselves and as a community, naming what is demanding in the world and heavy on our hearts. We wound and have wounds. We speak more than we listen. We rush to judgment without hearing another story. We lead with force rather than compassion. We take for ourselves rather than sharing what we have been given. Forgive us and restore us, trusting that your story of love for the world continues to be written. Amen. God's mercy is immeasurable. There is more than enough. In life, in death, and throughout our journey, God is with us. Hear today what God has already given you, forgiveness, love, and a place in God's story, all in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> We pray for the work we are each called to do. Help us in words and deeds build the world you envision. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to be seated, and I invite third graders and their parents and Rich Holloquay, who is our director of uh, children, youth, and families, to come up front for this third grade Bible milestone. So good to have you all here today. Come up around here. Yay. Awesome. Thank you for being here. Um, like I said in the retreat just uh, 20 minutes ago, uh, we wanted to do something like this because we don't do this alone, right? This is an ongoing process of faith together. So hear these words as a blessing. At Mount Olivet, we believe that the Bible is a living word that tells us over and over again about God's love. We want you to know the stories in here well. They have given people hope, comfort, wisdom and strength for over 2,000 years, and they can do the same for you. As you dwell in God's word, you continue your journey of faith that began at this font. Today, we make the same sign of the cross that was made at your baptism on your forehead and heart to remind you of God's love for you. And so, parents, please trace a cross on the forehead of your child and I speak these words. Receive the cross on your forehead, a sign of God's endless love for you. May the stories of scripture open your mind to look for God at work in the world. And now parents, I invite you to trace, trace the sign of the cross on your child's heart. Receive the cross on your heart, 
a sign of God's endless mercy for you. May the stories of scripture open your heart to listen for God at work in your life. This community has promised to know and celebrate your call in the world. And today we celebrate your call to read and learn from the Bible. Receive this blessing before we applaud this milestone in your faith life. Third graders, you have received your Bible. Hear God's word with us. Learn to tell its stories. Discover its mysteries. Honor its commandments. Rejoice, rejoice in its good news. May God's life-giving word inspire you and make you wise. Amen. Yay, let's give them some applause. Way to go, third graders and parents. Uh, we're so glad to be doing this journey with you and so glad you guys had a time as a big class today with Rich. So thank you for coming up. We continue now with our reading and Dan. Good morning. Congratulations, third graders, on your new Bibles. Let's uh, get started by digging into Exodus today. <laughs> Chapter 18. The next day, Moses sat as judge for the people while people stood around him from morning until evening. When Moses' father-in-law saw all that he was doing for the people, he said, what is this that you are doing for the people? Why do you sit alone while all the people stand around you from morning until evening? Moses said to his father-in-law, because the people come to me to inquire of God. When they have a dispute, they come to me and I decide between one person and another and I make known to them the statutes and instructions of God. Moses' father-in-law said to him, what you're doing is not good. You will surely wear yourself out, both you and these people with you, for the task is too heavy for you. You cannot do it alone. Now listen to me. I will give you counsel and God be with you. You should present, represent the people before God and you should bring their cases before God. Teach them the statutes and instructions that make known to them the way they are to go and the things they are to do. You should also look for the able men among all the people, men who fear God, are trustworthy, and hate dishonest gain. Set such men over them as officers over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. Let them sit as judges for the people at all times. Let them bring every important case to you but decide every minor case themselves. So it will be easier for you, and they will bear the burden with you. If you do this, and God so commands you, then you will be able to endure, and all these people will go to their home in peace. So Moses listened to his father-in-law and did all that he had said. Moses chose able men from all Israel and appointed them as heads over people, as officers over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens. And they judged the people at all times. Hard cases they brought to Moses, but any minor case they decided themselves. Then Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went off to his own country. Word of God, word of life. Hey, Dan. God's grace and peace to all of us gathered here in the sanctuary and to everyone online, wherever you are today as well. Even if you decided to go to church every single day, you would never hear this story. The group of scholars who created the collection of appointed Bible readings for each Sunday and church holidays, we call it the Revised Common Lectionary, decided not to include this one. What a miss. I'm glad we get to hear it today. We know stories about Moses. 
he actually saw one of his friends being um, hurt by an Egyptian and went back and murdered that Egyptian and then buried him in the sand. And he fled then for his life, trying to avoid punishment. And one day he's alone in the hills herding sheep and something catches his eye. There's a fire up ahead, a flame held within a bush that didn't burn up. God spoke to Moses in that fire and called him to lead the Israelite people from slavery under the wrath of Pharaoh to freedom. Moses scoffed at the invitation. I'm not a public speaker, God. Did you miss that I stutter? I've never led people before. And I'm a little bit intimidated by Pharaoh because he's out to get me. And still, he decided to take the next step, and God showed up. God continued to speak to Moses, and God acted as God had promised. And so where we pick up today, where Dan read, the Israelites have been freed from Pharaoh, and they have miraculously crossed the Red Sea as God parted it, and they're now making their way to this land God has promised. They're deep in the wilderness. Moses is in the center of it, not only the liaison between God and God's people, Moses is also holding this community together, acting as a judge for all the disputes among thousands of people. Enter in Jethro, who was not an Israelite, but a, a Midianite, Midianite priest who also happens to be Moses' father-in-law. He reunites Moses with his wife and kids and comes to stay a while. Jethro, not in the know of all that Moses and God have talked about, not involved in all that has been established thus far, makes a clear observation. He tells his son-in-law, you are not on your own able to take on all that you are doing. It's not good for you, and it's not good for God's people. Quite bluntly, Moses, this is not all about you. So invite, equip, and delegate some of your work to others who are invested and committed. The word used in Exodus is capable, trustworthy. It will allow you to be where you need to be, and it will raise up new leaders among you. So Moses did as Jethro recommended, and the community found its way, and Moses maybe even be able, began to sleep a little better at night. Now up to this point, Moses had listened to the direct words of God before he would take action. Interesting though, isn't it? that God doesn't speak in this story. God never commands Moses to delegate. Could it be that other people, often people outside our inner circles, are a part of speaking truth and creating the just, thriving communities that God intends? This week, I reached out to Kathy Mays, who's the executive director of Loaves and Fishes, and to Michelle Ness, the executive director of PRISM, who is our local social service agency. Both organizations are community partners of Mount Olivet. And I asked them, I said, can you describe a time where another voice impacted your leadership? and extended the impact and vision of the organization you lead. And here are their words. This is from Kathy Mays at Lois and Fishes. It was around 3 a.m. We had already weathered a nine month pandemic. It was cold and dark and I could not sleep. I was struggling. My plate felt like a human resource platter. 
Each one of the Loaves and Fishes staff needed their own private working sessions with me on how to proceed with the changing times. And then they had their own staffs that they were directing that were asking similar questions. And let's not even ignore the increased demand of meals and operations. The layers fell deep and hard, and I needed a plan. And so I woke up and got up and pulled up our organizational chart, and I realized that I had built an amazing organization, and yet I was still holding all of the responsibilities and managing too many people. I started tinkering and dreaming, and I built a new chart that was manageable and gave more leadership to others. It freed me from knowing the things I should not even have to know, and it took us from where we were at that point to where we are now. And from Michelle Ness at PRISM. In 2014, PRISM was going through a life, a life cycle growing pain. I had done some right sizing and much of the staff had turned over. I chose, however, to make time for nurturing relationships in the community. And when I met the chief operating officer of the Jewish Family and Children's Services, we immediately hit it off and had many great coffee conversations about our work, the nonprofit sector, and the opportunities for each of us to work smarter. I had received words of warning from colleagues about the perils of working alongside larger organizations. And while I didn't agree with their assessment, I remember noticeable skepticism. Within a year, PRISM and the Jewish Family and Children's Services had a shared staff member who brought ideas, resources, and sheer people power to our small operation. We were down to about seven staff at that time, and she shared that one of their board members was particularly interested in hunger and wanted a tour of PRISM. And so I said, yes, I welcomed it. Within two years, this man agreed to buy or build a new building for both PRISM and JFCS. His generosity has been unmatched. For Kathy Mays, the voice came during a restless night. For Michelle, someone from the outside of the PRISM community with a similar passion to confront food insecurity. God was never mentioned in either of these conversations, but clearly the work of these organizations are about feeding people creating just and whole lives, and building community, which are God's vision for this world. Mount Olivet, if we really want to live our vision to be a community partnering with God in the world, we need to trust the voices, the partners, and the generosity that we are yet to meet. Or maybe, like Moses, it will be as close as somebody's in-law. The church and its pastors and leaders can't think that they hold all the insights, the management skills, or the vision on their own to usher in the world that God promises. And of course, God's word and call will come through a red letter Bible. It will come in the time of quiet prayer, and it will also be made known in the voices of people we would never expect. The church has many inefficiencies and blind spots. Where is there space for us to delegate? Where is there space for us to partner? Where is there space for us to listen to the quiet voice that speaks to you as you lay awake at night in the meeting of someone new who shares a passion or an idea? You just never know where God will be found. And it takes guts to act, to change, especially when everything around you looks so scarce. I've said this before and I'll say it again. We're spending time listening this fall. We want to make visible your experience while we were physically separate, separated, and we also want to hear what you see. Where's the church being called? What are you noticing? 
And then where are you to call to step in, to create, to empower, and to build? Did you notice the words in verse 24? Moses listened to Jethro. Listening is an act of love. And it also leads us into the future. And then I also ask this for you personally in your life, in your work and in your families and in the organizations where you choose to invest. Who are the voices you are called to meet? Who are you called to listen to? Who will it be that will help you see ways to create more possibilities, to push, to push you to be generous, to make real the world God intends. Sometimes in the letting go is the way that things open up abundantly. My wise Old Testament professor, Terry Fretheim, wrote, God often makes use of the wisdom, insights, and imagination and common sense of the Jethro's of this world to make the divine will known to be of assistance to the community and in the furtherances of divine purposes. Jethro is never mentioned again in the Bible after this story. I guess Moses could have taken all the credit. Thankfully, someone wrote this story down, and thankfully, we will continue to tell it. Amen. together 
Before we share the piece together, um, we always tell a story here at Mount Olivet um, during the offering of the impact that this community has because we are community. And I actually brought a prop today. Look at this beauty. This squash came right from our garden and I talked to Melissa, our kitchen manager. She's gonna slice and dice that for the kids in the Child Learning Center downstairs so they can get their veggies tomorrow. Um, but our community garden has grown immensely, and I want to call out especially Barry Froseth, Mark Schmidt, Susan Shelberg, and Julie Derby, who get their hands in the dirt all the time. Look at that abundance. Everything that is grown is shared with our community partners, with our own community meal on Monday nights, or with the kids in the Child Learning Center, and it's amazing. You plant some seeds, some tiny plants, and what comes forth is beyond and people are called to do it. So um, just today marking that, that's what happens in community. Um, the things grow beyond, so uh, we're grateful for that. And now, if you're here at church, um, when we share the peace, I invite you to share a socially distanced sign of peace. Both give that and receive it, bring it on. And if you're online, you can type that in the comments. Um, kids, I have your basket up here. Anything that you put in the offering basket, kids, goes to world hunger and adults for all the ways that you financially give to our mission and vision. Um, if you did bring an offering today, we do have a box out on the counter where you can put that And Thank you so much for your generosity. And so now may the peace of God be with you all. Let's both share and receive a sign of peace with each other. slowly start to build a beautiful city yes we can yes we can we can build a beautiful city not a city city. 
Beautiful. Beautiful city. Okay, Claire and Benjamin and your families, are you ready to come up around the front? Come join me. And everyone here and online, um, everything that you need is in your bulletin or up on the screen. Come on up, you guys. And I have to say, as you're gathering, I'm so glad you got to see that third grade milestone because everything that we're about in Promise at this font, that was just exactly how it works. Like families and communities working together to um, nurture faith in kids and also nurture faith in families. So you will hear very similar words in this baptism service as you heard in that third grade blessing, which I love how all of that connects. Claire, you are ready for this. You've got something to say, that's for sure. In baptism, God delivers us from sin and death and raises us to new life in Christ. By water and the word, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, anointed with a gift of Holy Spirit and joined in God's mission for the life of the world. Parents and godparents, do you present Benjamin and Claire to receive the sacrament of holy baptism? If so, say together, we do. Parents and godparents, do you promise to help Benjamin and Claire grow in Christian faith and life? If so, answer together, we will. And all of us gathered here in person and online, will you be active partners in Benjamin and Claire's faith development? If so, we say with joy, we will. We will. We will. All of us who are gathered, let's reject sin and confess the faith faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? We renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? We renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? We renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? We believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. All right, Benjamin, are you ready? Come on up, Godparents. Benjamin Howard, Zachar, surrounded by those who love and support you, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Benjamin, child of God, you've received the Holy Spirit and have been marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. Okay, Claire. We'll take everything you've got. There. Claire, Lynn Olson, surrounded by those who love and support you. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Claire, child of God, you've received the Holy Spirit and have been marked with the cross of Christ forever, amen. Claire, I'm gonna follow you everywhere. <laughs> All right. Okay, godparents, here is a baptismal candle. It's a small version of this Christ candle. And there's one for Claire and one for Benjamin. You can light it on this Christ candle here. And this candle signifies both Jesus' death and his resurrection and the power of light. 
that uh, shines in Claire's heart and Benjamin's heart. So while you hold that candle, I am going to invite us to pray together. Actually, I'm going to say this, and then we're going to pray. Um, friends in Christ, this light signifies that Jesus will light Benjamin and Claire's way and enlighten their hearts. And now we're going to pray, so please join me. Gracious God, with the waters of this baptism and the commitment of all who are gathered, guide the journey that has begun at this font. Strengthen families to nurture faith and empower this community to know and celebrate Benjamin and Claire's call in this world. So we're first gonna welcome Claire and Benjamin with words and then we'll welcome them with applause. We welcome you into the body of Christ as we respond to God's call to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Amen. Let's give them a applause. Good job. I love when we have one awake and one sleeping. It's that wonderful balance of both. And we come bearing gifts. These are actually blankets that have been made by the youth and family here at Mount Olivet, a tangible sign that not only are Claire and Benjamin wrapped in God's love, but also the love of this community. Um, and you join a vast community, like I said before, we made a promise on your child's behalf today to know and celebrate their call in the world. And we know that that promise will be made true in their life ahead. And we can't wait for that. <laughs> So with that, I invite you, if you can, while we serenade you to this little light of mine, if you can just walk Claire and Benjamin around so everyone can get a closer look. And congratulations and love to your families. And you're welcome to blow those candles out or keep them lit, whatever works. There's a little place for that. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Give it to me. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. This little light. This little light of mine. Not only did you get to hear a story that we never hear in church, you get both sacraments today, so it's a good day. <laughs> in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray now the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I think it's clear today that God never stops inviting. And God's grace is one that is so wide that God will use everything within the human creational realm to continue that vision. And so for all the ways that God speaks and calls us with people we haven't met yet into a, a generous sense of this vision that God has for all people, that is the grace that comes to you today. And it keeps coming that it's found in ordinary ways like bread and wine and crackers and grape juice. May you feel that grace today and may you open your ears to listen to others and may you speak so others may listen to you. The body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. So here at Mount Olivet, when we pray, it's all our prayers together. And if you are online, I invite you to type your comments in, um, and I will pray those. And then for us here, I will gather your prayers and pray them as a community. As we do, I just want to bring attention to um, this wreath that's been outside, um, right outside our front door since September of 2020. And we have invited you, when you have come to pray here at church outside, to wrap a little piece of fabric around this wreath as a sign that you've been there, so the person who comes after you knows that they're not alone. And um, lots of prayers have been prayed over this last year in that space. And I really honor those prayers as we transition back into the building. And so I wanted to point out something that's existing and something that's new as it relates to prayer. We have a prayer wall just across from the staff offices where you're invited to write a personal confidential prayer inserted in the wall, and then our prayer team will pray that, pray alongside of you for those prayers that are confidential. If you have a prayer that um, doesn't need to be as personal, we have a new remembrance book out there where you can write um, needs or concerns that you have. If you have an anniversary of a death or a person um, that you're praying for ongoing, write it in this book. We are gonna bring that book back into church on a regular basis and be able to pray. So just lots of ways that you can actually connect um, what's on your heart to a bigger community and we're united in this as well. I also want to put an invitation. Um, if prayer is something that you feel a specific call to, we have an engaged prayer team here at Mount Olivet. And if you're interested in finding out more or joining that team, we'd love to be able to share more with you as well. Um, so with that, um, let's pray as a community. And I will 
pull up online those prayers that we have. A little slow here, sorry. Here we go. Um, yes, Claire and Benjamin, um, thanks be to God for your life and for your baptism day and all these beautiful people around you who are surrounding you, um, uh, for your life as it emerges for us as a community that walks with you. God in your mercy. Her prayer. Kim, praying with you, um, you write for my friend Judy, who lost her soulmate Don, and my friend Heidi, whose husband was lost. Um, in the midst of uh, this grief for Judy and for Heidi and for Don's life, um, that promise that held Don in this life and now holds him in heaven and for how he was beloved in his family and wider community. And for the, Don's family as they grieve now, trying to make their way um, without a husband and a soulmate. Um, oh, it looks like Heidi, whose husband was just diagnosed with cancer, um, that is treatable. So death and also cancer, God, in the midst of one prayer. Uh, we pray for healing, God, in this life and beyond, and for all the ways that you will come close through the love of other people. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yes, Lori, praying for Sue Leland, who has to have back surgery again, uh, back fusion surgery, um, and uh, Sue is going to have that done on Wednesday. And Sue, we love you. Um, we entrust you into the care of the doctors and know that it's a long journey ahead for your um, recovery and mobility, uh, for your dear family, for all of us in the community who love you and are praying for you, God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Angela, so good to get your note. Neil and I are back home from Mayo after another couple surgeries. It may be a long recovery, but we're optimistic. Neil, um, we're hanging with you through um, too many surgeries on your jaw, um, too many doctors that you have seen, and um, a path that has been um, not straight one bit. Um, for the love of you, Angela, that comes so close, for the care that you have access to, uh, Neil, for you to know that we're with you in the days ahead, however long it takes, that you are not alone. We pray for your healing. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yes, um, Ron, thank you. Praying for Steve Gartland, who has eye cancer, um, getting his eye removed this week. Uh, Steve and Merla Jean were with you um, in surgery and whatever comes after that. Um, for your faith that joins in our faith that comes from God, uh, who will come close, and for all the ways that you will um, be able to feel that in your heart. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Um, Angela Gritton, yes, Angela, praying for Laura Harding's dad in his ongoing recovery, um, indeed for healing, Laura, for your dad and your whole family, God in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Linda Finley, praying for our family's youngest friend, Jameson, who passed unexpectedly in his sleep Friday night, praying for his family and for all of us who loved him. Um, God, we cannot understand, we can't understand, um, but we hold your promise that there's nothing that can separate you from your love for this family in deep, deep grief, um, losing a child, and Linda, for all the ways that you and your family will come close to this family. God, when words are not there, uh, you know the cries of our hearts. God, in your mercy. What prayers do you have today? God, for the prayers we have spoken today and those things, uh, the needs and the hurts and the grief and the unfinished business, 
uh, where things feel um, too small and scarce. Um, fill our hearts and fill our lives, God, amen. I have some announcements for you. Um, we're talking a lot about we're calling a new pastor. I'm pretty excited about it. And um, our call committee is here. There's space in the Welcome Center. And we just want to be um, around to be able to ask you questions. Bishop Ann Spenningson of the Minneapolis Area Synod was here last week at Mount Olivet. Such a good conversation that we had and for her to know us as well as she does. And those candidates, they are working on those candidates that are going to come our way very shortly. So we're here to keep you posted. If you have questions, you can meet us out there, and we'd love to talk to you more about that. Um, I'm also very excited um, that I've invited some really great preachers to join me in the pulpit and starting next week. They are going to come every other week. Uh, Peter Geisendorfer Lindgren, Pastor Peter, is Pastor Emeritus at Lord of Life in Maple Grove. He led that community for over three decades. Uh, Peter and I serve on a board together, and he is a good friend. And when I told them that I was flying solo, he said, I'd love to come and preach at Mount Olivet. And I said, we would love to have you. So um, please meet, join me in welcoming Peter uh, next week. I'm really excited about that. Um, and then next Sunday, talking about listening between services, we're asking you to bring a story or an artifact. Um, while we were away over the last 18 months um, because we truly believe when we share stories and hear each other's stories that God is present in that. So um, we will do that next Sunday. So Claire's family and Benjamin's family, God's peace and love to you on this special day and as you celebrate as a family. And um, I hope you got a glimpse today of the community that you're joining as we walk this life of faith together. So um, I invite you now, everyone, to receive this blessing. Be blessed by God who finds you in the wilderness, by Jesus who listens and forgives, and by the Spirit creating a way. Amen. Go in peace. The story unfolds. Come and see. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now.
Show.